this service at Mayfield First United Methodist Church. We're going to start with something a little different. We're going to, we're going to do several things a little differently today, aren't we? So uh, here's something that we don't do nearly enough, I think. And so today we're going to try this. We're going to do the passing of the peace. Are you familiar with passing of the peace? In just a moment, you'll be able to stand and you'll be able to greet others. But this isn't the howdy duty how you're doing this morning. It's good to see you here. What I want you to do is to concentrate on one of the most ancient of all Christian greetings. And it is very simple and very meaningful. As you greet someone, preferably someone to whom you have not spoken this day, please say to them, the peace of Christ be with you. Or Christ be with you. Or God bless you. Or what? Ever you think in that same vein, and if you make a reply, your reply is, and also with you, okay? So if you would, take just a few moments, rise, find somebody to greet with Christian brotherly love. <laughs> I will say something else. Sometimes, sometimes, it, sometimes you can change your attitude just by changing your seat. That's enough said about that. I do want to, I do want to welcome everybody. Uh, we, we, we especially have a, uh, do we have the, the, the baby picture? We especially want to, uh, to welcome into, ah yes, Olivia Blake Kirksey. Uh, we certainly welcome her and uh, let your prayers, if they haven't already started, let your prayers start for her and continue to pray for her as long as you can. You know, she's going to need our help. She's going to need our prayers. Maybe she'll grow up and she'll bless us and pray for us as well. Well, uh, I want you to, to remember to look at your bulletin and whatever may be of interest in you, to you there. Uh, those of you who are visitors especially, uh, there's a tear-off uh, on that bulletin. And if you would, please uh, fill that out and tear it off and uh, put it in the plate with it when it comes by. Uh, just put as much as you want us to know. Uh, but we would like to know who's here and, and, uh, and if you would like for us to contact you and that sort of thing. So take a, little, take a moment and do that. And you members know that you're supposed to be doing that as well. Uh, so... If you get that taken care of, it will, it will work to everyone's benefit. Well, we've got a lot to do uh, today, and uh, we're, we're going we're gonna to pack several things in it, and, and I hope you'll pay attention to all of them. I, I, I sincerely hope that you've made plans to be here for a while today. I hope you've done that. Uh, sometimes we lose uh, church in the hubbub of... Uh, 
life. Sometimes we need to slow down and just stay at God's house for just a little bit. So, but we have some special things going on today, and uh, we, we have uh, two folks who are going to uh, help us with those things, and then after that we will have an opening prayer. Kim, would you like to go first? Welcome to Summer London for Madison Day. Um, some pictures that are coming up on the slide, it, it dawned on me that you guys probably, some of you that visit off and on, and, and even folks that regularly attend, may not remember who Madison is. She is a 17-year-old junior uh, who lives here in Graves County with us and attends our church. And she is currently in Florida um, undergoing some treatments for um, basically a parasitic infection that she has contracted from a tick or a mosquito or something. It doesn't really matter how. It's just completely compromised her entire immune system and her organs. So. Today's event is specifically to help offset some costs for them. We couldn't possibly um, come <coughs> close to touching her medical expenses, and we know that God will levy that in his time and in his power and grace. But what we can do is support this family, not only as the body of Christ and loving them, but um, financially. And um, you all are doing that beautifully, and I appreciate it so much. She is going through typical teenage struggles, and she's also... Um, as teenagers typically are, focused about themselves, and she's asking a lot of, why me? Why is God doing this to me, specifically to me? And it's hard for her right now to understand that there is a plan in place. But we all know that, and we trust in that, and we, we put that in God's hands um, for ourselves and also for Madison on this day. Um, there's a wonderful lunch prepared. Some of you know all about it. Some of you don't. Some of you are visiting. Please stay and eat doesn't cost you a cent, but whatever you'd like to donate towards this cause would be fantastic. Um, some specific things to tell you uh, about her week, about her course during the week when she's going through her treatments and things. Monday is kind of a regroup day. Tuesday is a start flushing the system day with supplements and fluids and things to get her ready basically for Wednesday, which is like a super duper detox day. Thursday, they told me, is a specific pivotal day for her in regards to what the um, supplements and so forth are able to do for her body, and then Friday is lab work day. So if you're like me and you like specific dates and things, uh, times of the week to pray about certain things, I know we've kind of all done that with a little girl that's going through treatment, her name is Savannah, but anyway, I like knowing that when I'm praying, I can pray specifically. So Thursdays, Tuesdays and Thursdays, if you would just kind of make a note, and I'm, I'm sure the church will also send out some emails to remind us to pray for Madison and others, but specifically Tuesdays and Thursdays for her and her family. Um, anyway, she is making progress. They hope to be home by the 1st of August. She's had to change some school uh, things around a little bit due to mold situations in the schools around, but, you know, it is what it is, and I'm so thankful that you're here, and I want you to stay for lunch, and let's have fun. Tommy Waldrop is going to auction off some desserts for us, and we're going to have a blast. So please stay, and, and let's have a good time. Thank you. Molly's up next. Good morning. Wow, this is short. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Good morning. Good morning. As you know, we have many individuals and families in our community that can struggle to fill their cupboards at their homes. As you also know, we have a great need food line out here at Grace County and Mayfield that help people who are hungry. The youth here at Mayfield, Mayfield First are currently collecting canned food and non-perishable food items for the food pantry, and we would like your, to thank you in advance for the help that you will, for us. I'm so sorry. We have marked tubs downstairs in the fellowship hall and out here in the narthex where you can pick up, you can put down your donated food items. I am so sorry. I keep stumbling. You're fine. We are okay. We are collecting canned vegetables, canned meats like tuna and chicken, canned fruit, and box food items like mashed potatoes, stuffing, crackers, and mac and cheese. And please remember to check expiration dates too. If you have something to donate from your own pantry, we really don't want food from the ice storm. 
This collection will take place throughout July 24th when the youth will gather all donations and take all the donations to the food pantry. Thank you again for your contributions and support for the youth in those in our community. Yay. I want you to take another moment, if you would, please. I want you to take a centering moment. I want you, for just a few moments, to think of nothing. That will be easier for some of you than for others. Some of you do that constantly, but make a special effort now for just a few moments to think of nothing. Almighty and merciful Heavenly Father, we praise your holy name. We give you our thanks and our praise for bringing us to this place this day. We give you our thanks and praise for putting us in each other's way. We praise you for this community of your people, and we praise you for the opportunity to serve. Send your spirit to open our hearts this day and in all days that we may see what is before us, see the world around us, see the blessings which you give us, see the resources that we have, and use all of those things for the glory of your name and for the building of your kingdom. Be with us now as we come to you in worship. Send your spirit to fill our hearts and fill this place. Let us be totally in your care this moment. Help us to understand that you are sitting right here with us and help us to take that feeling with us when we leave, that we may be the people that you would want us to be in a world which needs all the help it can get. So lift us up as we lift you up. And we will remember always to praise your holy and precious name. We pray it in the sweet, sweet name of Jesus. Amen. Stand with us if you would, please.
Now, if you would, please uh, join me in this affirmation of faith which comes to us from Paul's letter to the Romans. Let's all join together as we pray. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. my boys with me today and we're going to talk about Jesus and his strength and his goodness and the things that he does for us. Hi Miles. A Bible story today that we're going to have in just a little bit. Let me get this cord out of Miles' toes. Talks about how when we're troubled or when we're sad or when we have something heavy that we're packing around. Think a baby's heavy. Is a baby heavy? 
I can even lift that baby. Yeah. What about a brick? Is a brick heavy? Yeah, a brick can be heavy, can it? What about um, a grown-up? Your mom or dad, are they heavy? Yes, they are, aren't they? Yes. Well, did you know that Jesus can pick up and carry in his heart and in his loving arms anything heavy? Did you know that? Do you believe that? What about what? Yes, you believe that? A building? If that building had troubles, I think that he could. Because that's what he does in his perfect love for all of us, is that he holds us close and he wants us to come to him when we've got troubles or when we're sad or when we're carrying something heavy like, I don't know, maybe picking up our toys. That could be heavy, couldn't it? No, it couldn't. Well, I brought my strong man here, and he's going to do an experiment for us, and we're just going to see how strong he actually is. He goes to the gym a lot, and he lifts weights a lot. You know that about him? Mm, okay, well, can Max stand up? Can you lift this baby? Yeah, you can lift that baby. Good job. Let's give Max a hand. Way to go. All right. Okay, Max, can you lift Kyler? <laughs> okay, Max, can you lift me? Oh! <laughs> Turn me around. <laughs> Thank you, God and Jesus, so much for being strong for us and for loving us and for carrying our burdens and our heavy stuff when we just don't need to do it anymore. Help us to remember that, God. Help us to keep that in our hearts and to keep focused and to pay attention to the things that you would have us give over to you. We love you, Lord. We thank you for this day and this time to smile and be together. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, time for children's church. As we come into this uh, this time of our service, where where we make an offering, I I want to make sure that we think about the, the, the right things if we, if we can we often ask for monetary things for money and it's necessary you know it is that's the way we run things that's the way we do missions it's all of that but you know Jesus tells us some things very specific and he tells us for one thing that if we're not better than the Pharisees were we're not working like we ought to and the Pharisees walked around and talked a lot but didn't do very much for anybody except themselves that is not the example which Jesus puts out front for us and what he wants is us you know he doesn't want much he just wants it all he wants us he wants our spirits he wants our souls he, he wants us to think of him. He wants us to try to be like him. He wants us to speak the words that he would have us to speak and go where we should go and do what we should do in his name. You see, that, that's, that's what he really wants, and that's what he wants us to give to him. That's our real offering. It's not just, it's not just what you put in the plate, you know. It's not how hard you thump the plate when it goes by. It, it's what we mean to do with the means we have. So this day, let's concentrate on improving that. I, I have a habit of telling people, you know, you don't have to necessarily give until it hurts, but you do need to give until you notice. And that includes doing things, not just giving things. Let us pray. Dear God, we do thank you for the multitude of blessings which you heap on us daily. 
Some of those blessings we know, some we never see, but we know that you bless us in oh so many ways. We do know that we are of all people, in all places, in all ways of all the people, most blessed because we have you. We come to you now asking that you would expand our hearts, that you would help us to see that you would help us to know, that you would help us to feel, that you would help us to do and be the people that you would have us to be. Take now our tithes, our gifts, and our offerings, whatever they may be. Bless them. Bless the givers and bless the gifts and bless all the gifts that we give that they may in some way build up <clears throat> your kingdom and make it a better world while we are here and make us the people that other people want to be. Keep us in love with you and in love with each other. We ask it in the incomparably sweet name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior, he who gave us everything. Amen. Join me now for our gospel reading for today. It comes to us from the Gospel of Matthew. It's a very familiar reading. I hope you not only read it, but understand it and have it in your hearts and use it 
every day. Let us read all of this, all of us, together. So you read with me, and we're going to read the whole thing together, okay? Okay. Jesus said, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. <laughs>
probably haven't seen a lot of me because in October of 2014 I filled out some paperwork to become a certified servant. I read over the paperwork that Joe gave me and nowhere did it say anything about speaking so I filled it out and turned it in and at our church conference I was approved and a week later I was called by Mark Stevens to go and speak over at Christ Methodist Church. And I, you might as well say I have been a circuit rider ever since then. I have gone where I have been asked. Uh, in no way, shape, form, or fashion am I a trained professional. I'm just someone that said yes whenever God said, who will I send? So I, I am gl you know, I'm glad to be here today. I was really hoping that all of the choir would go sit out front because I do not trust Gerald McLean behind me. <laughs> not at all. No, he, he needs to go on out there. Okay, any other? I think I'm good with the rest. So, okay. Uh, now, I've already been asked if I'm going to be long-winded this morning, and I won't say who told me, but they sit close to my regular place over here. Well, I will have to say I was at Trinity earlier this morning, and they got the condensed version because I was afraid that I might not finish there in time to get here in time. So if you notice all of the books there in front of me, now if you know me very well at all, you know I love to read and study. I get a hold of scripture, and I'm just like a dog with a bone. I'm going to gnaw it to death. I do word studies, and I look for what it means in the Hebrew and the Greek. So I brought all, well, not all, but a lot of my study material with me. So does my looking at my watch to see how much time I have and this stack of books make you a little nervous? Well, good. Now we're even. We are on the same playing field. I was not going to be the only nervous person in this room this morning. <laughs> so we'll go ahead and get started. We're going to focus today on gentleness. Now we want to look at what it is, what it looks like, and then how can we live that out in our lives. Now, yes, I do uh, word studies. So the Greek transliteration of the world gentleness is meek, gentleness of spirit. It is accepting God's dealing with us as good, therefore without dispute or resisting. In other words, it is no longer fighting with God. You take off the boxing gloves and you throw in the towel. God wants us to give him control of our lives. With the wisdom given to us by the Holy Spirit, we begin to see why we should completely submit to God as Lord of our lives. The gentle or meek person heavily relies on God rather than their own strength. They trust in God's goodness and control over every situation. They are not occupied with self at all. Now, some of you, I'm sure, remember Frank Sinatra. 
and some of you have no clue who Frank Sinatra is. But he had a song entitled, My Way. And it starts out like this. And now the end is near, and so I face the final curtain. I'll state my case, of which I'm certain. I've lived a life that's full. I've traveled each and every highway. And more, much more than this, I did it my way. Being gentle means doing it God's way, not my way. So let's look and see what gentleness looks like so that we will not be a Frank Sinatra Christian. Philippians 4, 5 says, Let your gentleness be evident to all. And I love how this is read in the message. It says, Make it as clear as you can to all you meet that you're on their side, working with them, not against them. Gentleness should be obvious in our words, in our actions, and our attitudes. Our reputation should be one of gentleness. The greatest insult anyone can ever give you is to ask you if you are a Christian. They should know it just by the way that you behave. Another scripture, Colossians 3.12 as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Now the word meekness, that's our word gentleness. It's the very same thing. Now we have to be intentional. Most of us give some thought to what we're going to wear each day. If nothing else, the weather will tell you what you're going to wear. We need to be just as selective as with our Christian clothing. Each morning we should, put, we should choose to put on the characteristics of Christ and wear them all day long. Ephesians 4, 1 through 3. Therefore, I, a prisoner for serving the Lord, beg you, to lead a life worthy of your calling, for you have been called by God. Always be humble and gentle. Be patient with each other, making allowance for each other's faults because of your love. Make every effort to keep yourself united in the Spirit, binding yourself together with peace. Every one of us is powerful. We can speak words that either build up or tear down. We can act in ways that help or hurt. And we have the power to choose how we will influence others. Gentleness constrains and channels that power. 2 Timothy 2, 24, 25. And the Lord's servant must not be quarrelsome, but kindly to everyone, an apt teacher, patient, correcting opponents with gentleness. When we are filled with the Spirit's fruit of gentleness, we will put our pride aside and speak softly instead of arguing in resentment and anger. We will be confident in who we are, and whose we are, and we will not have to win the argument. There are times that you just have to agree to disagree and let it go at that. My mother used to tell me, now this was not because I was argumentative as a child, I was an angel as a child, and still am. My halo. But my mother used to tell me that it's better to be kind than it is to be right. So when I was growing up, I always wanted to be right. But I've outgrown that now. For some reason, we as a society no longer have tolerance for anyone who does not share the same belief that we do. 
I hear people say all the time they're going to unfriend someone if they don't vote the way they want them to in the upcoming election or because of this or because of that. You do not have to agree with everything that everybody says, especially on Facebook, people. Really. You are called to be kind and you are called to be gentle and you are called to love regardless of what the other position, the other person's position is. We have turned uh, to violence. We read about it in the newspaper and hear it on the TV and the radio every day. And for some reason, we think that violence makes us strong. And that just shows how weak we really are. 1 Peter 3.15 But in your hearts honor Christ the Lord as holy, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you, yet do it with gentleness and respect. Now I'm going to confess this is one that I have trouble with. See, I'm always ready to give the reason for my hope. I can tell you that no time at all. But whenever, and I love the word. I think you should be in the word every day, reading and studying, praying over the word. Let it be transforming you and changing you to where that you're not the same person that you were yesterday or even that morning. And when I hear people tell me they don't read their Bible, I want to get my biggest Bible and start hitting them over the head and not with gentleness, but with great force. And that just kind of loses the whole thing point of it. You cannot win anyone to Christ by beating them over the head with a Bible. You have to show them the love and the kindness and the gentleness in order to do that. So we've seen, we know the definition of gentleness and we have seen examples of how that should look. All of those scriptures, did, did you find yourself in any of those, in the way that you act and behave? So let's just see, how can we live it out? How can we be what we're called to be? Matthew 11, 28 through 30. This is our verse for today. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon me and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Now, Jesus first comes out, starts out and says, come. Now, that word means to follow. If we are to come or to follow Jesus, uh, we have to have the proper attitude in order to do that. When you hear Jesus say, come follow me, your reaction will be dependent upon the condition of your heart. Your will must uh, determine to let go of everything deliberately and commit to Jesus. When you follow Jesus, you no longer can live a divided life. You must be all in. Oswald Chambers says, we all want to do God's will. We're just not sure how much it's going to hurt. And that pretty much sums me up. I desperately want to do God's will. I'm just not so sure where it's going to take me and what I'm going to have to do and how uncomfortable it's going to make me. But you still do it. You have to put yourself aside, say yes, and go. Now the word take it means to take up, lift, place on oneself, to bear, to carry. This is the same word that Jesus uses whenever he says, take up your cross and follow me. We take up the yoke of Jesus just like we take up the cross. When we are yoked with Jesus, we walk beside him, we keep in step with him, keep pace with him, we are of one mind and one direction. We don't go where he doesn't go. Whenever I was a kid, my grandfather, his cousin, had the neighboring farm, 
and he had a pair of oxen, and I would just be amazed whenever he would work the oxen, and I would just stand and watch as long as I could. And if you have ever experienced that, you know they cannot go in separate directions. They, had all, they even had the big wooden uh, yoke on them, and where one went, the other went. They were not divided. They were not of separate minds. They were united. Now, it also says to take up your yoke and learn from me. Now, to learn is to uh, study, observe. It is knowledge acquired through the experience or instruction. And this is the same word that we use for disciple. A disciple is a student, someone who learns from study and observation. As we walk daily with Jesus, we study him, we observe him, we take on those same characteristics. And we come to the word gentle, our word for the day. Jesus is gentle. He gave up his will to do the will of his Father. He was obedient and completed his mission. When we are yoked with Jesus, we also will be gentle. If we are to fulfill our mission to make disciples in this world, we must learn from Jesus how to be gentle. Now Jesus also tells us that his yoke is easy. Now somehow that just seems like opposites to me, yoke and easy. But let me tell you what the word yoke means. It is tailored. In Greek it means well-fitting. In Palestine, ox yokes were made of wood. So after the initial measurements were taken, a rough cut was made at the shop and then followed by alterations that were done where the animal was. And that way, it fit just exactly right. What Jesus is saying is that my yoke fits well because it fits you. Your yoke won't fit me. And my yoke won't fit you. They're tailor-made. If you always wanted some tailored threads, here's your chance. Put on the yoke of Jesus. He's saying that life in which he calls you is not a burden to you so much as a task made to measure for you. And when he says that his burden is light, he's saying that his precepts and requirements are easy to keep as long as you're yoked with him. And what does he require? Micah 6 eight. He has told you, O oh man, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you, but to do justice, and to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. I don't know if you can make out the cartoon and what it's saying, but this is uh, Jesus is saying, when you see one set of footprints, this is when I carried you. You all are familiar with the footprint poem and everything. The next one, it says, that long groove is when I had to drag you kicking and screaming. How many but me? How many but me? And see, he doesn't want to drag us kicking and screaming. He wants it to be our choice, our free will, and out of love for all that he's done for us. He wants us to gladly pick up that yoke and put it on and walk beside him. When we come to Jesus, put on his yoke, and yearn from him, before long we have taken up his characteristics, and we begin to look less like ourselves, and we look more like Jesus. The transformation progress begins. This is a continuing action and we must yoke ourselves to Jesus daily. It's not one and done. It's every day. For us to be gentle and evident to all, we must take up the yoke of Christ and learn from him, 
grow in him and be like him. The challenge for us this week is to open our eyes, our hearts, and our minds and seek an honest answer to the question, am I a Frank Sinatra Christian or am I a follower of Christ? May the Lord add his blessing to the reading and studying of his word. As always, we need to be reminded that God's altar is always open. And there may be those here today who need to come down here for just a minute and pray. You may find it uh, worthwhile even to pray in your seats. That's certainly acceptable as long as you pray. But there's no other place like this. And it means something special when you do it. So I always invite you to take that time. We'll wait for you. We'll be right here with you. I also want to invite you to pay some attention to our closing song. And uh, I, don't, I don't know if you picked this song or not, Sam, but you could have. Because, okay, we'll say you did. It, it's such a great and wonderful song, near to the heart of God. We have to understand that, that that's the very essence of that gentleness, that God provides us a place where we can be completely protected, completely at rest, completely at peace, and live eternally in his gentleness. What a wonderful idea that may be. Let's stand together and sing. Father, we give you our thanks for bringing us here this day. We thank you for the blessings as they will continue for us this day. Go with us as we go into a time of fellowship, into a time of giving. Help our hearts and our minds to be right. Bless us in those things that we do which are according and good in your will. Keep us always safe and forgive us when we fail. And now hear this benediction. May the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, 
sweet companionship of the Holy Spirit. Be with us. Go with us. Live in us. And live through us for others today, tomorrow, and every day, even through eternity. Amen. Cons consider the meal.